you've got accesses for different places. Mm. You've got a locker there. The batteries, or your leisure battery are sitting underneath there. Okay, obviously the one for the engine, one for the leisure? Or the no, it's, 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 leisure's in there. Engine is inside the uh, Separate. cab. Yeah, so it's just underneath the floor in the cab. That's double leisure battery there, is it? I'm not sure if it's a double. We can have a look, man. Normally you'll have a single. Yeah, you've got double on this one. Okay, it will obviously charge by the uh, 240 when you're on site. You also obviously charge it when when you're uh, driving as well. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's magnetic, is it? Yeah. We're a bit stiff when I have a look at it. Oh, the, the lot? Yeah. yeah. Uh, should, it would have uh, lubricated these things. Yeah, I did ask you to yeah. put it in. Okay. Also, you have got storage underneath there as well. Just be very careful, make sure you are. See, that's obviously got a catch there, obviously. You can protect it, stop it from uh, sliding all the way out if you're driving. Right. Just make sure you do lock it and secure it, which is key, key secured. 248 lid, obviously there's one of them things with the caravan, obviously you're very unlikely to start driving off with the uh, cable in. Obviously with the motor yeah. you could do, so just be very careful that obviously you do pull that out before you start driving off. There was a TV area in yeah. Yeah. yeah, Yes, this one here, yeah. So What's that for then? You can uh, have an external aerial. So on, on the on super pitches, yeah. they can have a, a, a aerial connection that's actually on the bollard. Right. So you obviously need a cable to reach that. Sometimes the sites have cable you can hire off them or buy off them. Right. And you're just connecting your van into it. Obviously you can see it from the TV inside then. Well, do you have like your own sky dish? You I, I'm not sure if it would uh, plug through that or not. Right. It might be a different type of cable for satellite compared to uh, right. TV. Oh, it's not like a cat fly or nothing in there. I d I'm not, no. I'm not 100% on that. No. To be honest, I'm not an expert on the TV side of it. But okay. Yeah. Right, as, far as, as far as I'm aware, it's just an ordinary TV cable rather than yeah. Like that. Right. Unless, uh, unless someone has uh, obviously done the, uh, obviously changed it for their for their own personal reason. Right, toilet. I should think that should be pretty similar to your last one. Yeah, exactly. Apart same. Apart from you would have had a flush tank. Yeah. This one flushes off the main water tank. Oh, right. So as long as the water pump is switched on, and obviously you've got water in your water tank. That will flush it via that. So what you won't be using dye? Sorry? What about the pink dye for the first you, you won't be using that. Right. Okay. You that. All you'll be using is the blue, blue yes. chemical in the uh, cassette. You can get sprays for the pink, so you can just spray into the bowl if you wanted to. Right. right but okay. otherwise it's just a, a water flush. Okay. Okay. What you've got there is an external shower point. The actual shower head or whatever and pipe is on the kitchen sink. It's a shower point? Yeah. So an external, no, it's an external shower point. Okay, because you can see it's got cold and, cold and hot. Okay, not sure if this has got a barbecue yeah. point on it or not. It might be around the other side. So what, what do you use that for, is it? So that's something like washing, either washing your boots off or something like that, yeah, or right. dogs off, kids off, whatever you want to wash off. <laughs> There's so, an attachment for that, is there? Yeah, that, as I said, it's on the sink, it's on the sink in there. Okay, right. so you just, you just plug it in and turn it, and that'll right. operate properly the water. Again, as long as the water pump switched on. Okay, now you've got your, uh, that's the garage at the back of here. All the things you've got is fridge vents or fridge vent covers. So they you only utilise them in the winter months, okay? Because uh, the things with these fridges is that uh, they they run better when they're warmer. So if you're in the cold weather, it makes it struggles, especially on the gas, it will struggle. So you put them vents on only only need that in the winter. On that vent there, is it? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay. What you've also got is uh, a pipe. That's to connect your waste pipe, which I'll show you in a second. Once you've got a cable in there as well. Okay, obviously spare wheel, obviously situated. It's a garage in. bit, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, oh yeah, it's decent. There's some uh, naughty people in there. Mm. Yeah, I told you, <laughs> the naughty sleeping. The naughty yeah. box, that's yeah. like George is sleeping. That's a, uh, a naughty step with a lot, big naughty step. Okay, so the tire pressure's on these roughly? I don't know on this particular model, to be quite honest. It may, may say it on the plate, or it will say it in the handbook. Okay, so looking at this side, <laughs> this here is your drain, your waste. So underneath there is your waste pipe. So obviously you've got an understone waste tank. So before you would just add a, um, yeah. a waste master or whatever. This has its, has its own tank, which obviously collects the waste water from the uh, from the sinks and from the shower. What leakage? Yeah. I would say it's within more about than the hundred. Liter. Oh yeah, definitely more than that. Yeah. yeah, it's going to be at least around about the hundred liter I would expect on, on this size vehicle. Okay, but you can what also you connect that pipe to that pipe, do you? Yeah. Well, you can You may be able to. It depends on the t on the uh, drain you're driving over. If it's a big drain, you might just be able to just open that tap and just drain straight into it. No. If you. If I'm at home or something. Yeah. yeah. There is the, that pipe you just connect on the end, and obviously you can reach a certain distance, obviously not a full distance. There was, I see there's one outlet there, there's one down further yeah. down. The one down there yeah. is for your fresh water tank. So that's that, 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 yeah, that, that empties that. You do the winter thing there. Yeah, exactly. Okay. 
So what you can you can see inside there is if the, your boiler. You remember the boiler drain on your previous one was it like a yellow lever? Yeah. That, that's just situated there. You can see. You see there. On the floor there. Yeah. yeah. So that's the drain for your boiler and your taps. That's also drain. That one underneath is a drain for your waste tank. That drain there is a drain for your pressure. Okay, which I'll show you. Yeah. All right. Look, that's a drain there. And that's a TV and a like 12 volt socket there, isn't it? Yeah, you've got 240 and 12 volt there as well. Obviously, as long as you've got 240 curtain. Where's the wheel kit and stuff? That should be underneath the front um, passenger side. That's, that's your vent, it's got a bit similar, the vent there, the boiler, you've got to see this one beat, obviously that's your gas, that's your gas uh, locker, obviously you've got our gas connected to it at the moment, I'm not sure if that's, uh, that's our pigtail, well you need a pigtail obviously to uh, operate off whichever gas you're going to use, okay. most, most people tend to run on propane because uh, it's a better, better gas for all year round uh, if you're using butane. And that's your pigtail, is it? Yeah, that's my pigtail, yeah. Oh, not my pigtail, company pigtail. Okay. Well, then I need to get some pigtails in, is it? Yeah, you need to get a pigtail, yeah. Um, what you've also got with this is a what's called a crash sensor regulator. So that green button there. Yeah. And also, it's got a little sticker at the back there to tell you what it is. If you've turned your gas on and you're trying to operate gas inside your van and there's nothing happening, just come in and press that. Just press yeah. that for about three seconds and that, that will reset it, okay? It's a what they call a crash sensor, so it still doesn't stop you from uh, turning the gas off when you're traveling, but that will even just go over a bit of a bump or over a pothole may just operate that and just, it's obviously a safety feature. Good. Okay. What you've also got, you can see just behind, just behind the door, that's obviously where you fill your water. Yep. Okay, so you, what you'll, need is, you'll need something like a hose pipe or something like that, because on, on site, if you've noticed, they tend to have what is called a motorhome service point. So that's where you, you'll drive to to drain the water out of your waste tank. And also at the same time you could be throwing that up as well. Right. Okay, there is indicators up which I'll show you inside in a moment. There isn't like barbecue point, is there? No, I don't think there is on this one. No. Yeah. Okay. So did you use a gas bottle there? Yeah. Yeah, not multi-changer, but you just one big tail, isn't it? Yeah, it's just one, yeah. You use one gas for the gas bottle and one for the... You've got a Cadillac we have, you know, so. Yeah. That's it, yeah. You can just get a, a camper gas type uh, one for it if you wanted yeah. to, could you? It's yeah. only a small one that you can ca carry around with you. Obviously, with the space you've got at the back there, you can take up plenty of space yeah, to store it. Can, you'll probably find that you can you'll find it soon fill that. Yeah. Right, so if you'd like to go inside then. Oh. George's bed up there. Huh? George's bed. Oh my god. Does that pull down? Yeah. Actually, I've got much room. <laughs> that pulls down. So if one of you wants to go to the loo in the far side, then I should have climbed over the other one to get down. It's the same in the caravan, isn't it? Yeah, so it wasn't. Right. That's you're narrow in the caravan, is it? No. Obviously the it's better because he's even got the picture. If you pull into a lay-by, yeah. normally when you've just pulled into a lay-by, that's there. Obviously, underneath. If you pull into a lay-by, and normally what a lot of people do is just come from the cab and come into the obviously the habitation side yeah. of it. Just be careful you don't start walking out this door thinking, oh, I'll just go out this door, because you likely you're going to forget that's not here, out. Yeah. And you're just going to pile out for, out for the gap. <laughs> it's going to hurt. So just make sure that is out before you get down, if you, especially if you're stopping lay-by. Okay? If you like yeah. to go inside, I'll put my... So just above my head is the control panel, as you might have had seen some, some of the, perhaps probably not if you had the, the Luna, uh, Luna sorry, Unicool. So what you've got there is your power, your 12 volt system, switch your 12 volt systems on in, the, in your vehicle. You can see obviously lights are on at the moment, so the, all it is is that is asleep. I can just press any button just to light things up. Okay, so 12 volt systems, that switches that on or off, obviously water pump. Frost protect, so when you're actually using your van, obviously you've got an underslung tank, that will protect your tanks from uh, freezing, obviously as long as you've got heating here. Don't, don't think you can use that to protect it when you're on, say you've got it stored at home or stored in, in storage. If you haven't got any other heating on, it'll still freeze the pipes. So, right, so just, just it's only there if you're, if you're camping over winter time or cold, colder months, just to help protect it when, you, when you're in it.
Okay, view levels, if I press that, it will tell you what uh, is happening with your leisure battery, fresh water, obviously it's empty at the moment, it has got some water in it, it's, it's not that accurate, obviously it'll give you a, a certain level. Yeah, depending on the... Obviously, yeah. uh, obviously really really it's got, but it, it can drop from half to quarter quite quickly, it could be in half for a long time, then also it's, it's on quarter, so just keep an eye on that, it will let you know if it uh, obviously gets low. As I say, view levels, it tells you that, so your fresh water tank, also your waste water tank, obviously it's empty at the moment, right. and also your vehicle battery. So it'll detect itself whether it's plugged into the mains or 12 volt then? Yeah. Well that, that there, so that will indicate that you've got 240 connected. Right. That there is to say, it's, it's connected to leisure battery at the moment. You can, if you wanted to, if you're pressing hold that, it's now on vehicle battery. It's now taking 12 volts from the vehicle battery. Okay, right. it's, it's now actually charging the vehicle battery as well, but if you were on site and you had no electric, you go and put it on vehicle battery, you're going to be in trouble if you when you time to go home because you've just drained the battery. If you haven't got 240 connected, that's just no. going to drain your vehicle battery and you're going to be in trouble because you're not going to be able to start the engine. So well, if, the, if there's no 240 connected, yeah. you'll just use the leather, leather batteries yes. then, yes. not the vehicle battery. Yeah, if, as long as you put it onto that one, so you click the leather battery, as long as that light is lit there. Not the orange that, one. Yeah, so not the one that's on like on the bonnet of the car, yeah. or the vehicle even. Right. Okay, again, you can obviously view the level of the battery on that as well. Cabin lights, so that's an isolator for the whole lights in the cabin, quite obviously apart from that one. Okay, happy happy with that? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. So water system, obviously we'll come to you next. Obviously you fill your onboard tank. I'll just show you the drain. You just move your Yeah, sorry. You like mag. <laughs> you just have a look in here. So this is a bed? Yeah, this does make up into a bed. I told you. Yeah. You said because it was only a four berth that so you didn't think that this was a bed. Yes. It, it is, is, yeah. It is, yeah. It all pulls out into it makes up into a bed. See that handle there? That's yeah. to drain your fresh water tank. So okay. before you start pouring water in that, that hole on the outside of the wall there, just make sure that is shut because you'll just have uh, water pouring all over your all over your shoes as you're trying to get water in. That's just, shut then, obviously. Yeah, yeah, that's shut at the moment, yeah. So winter time and just keep that open then, is yeah, it? Yeah, and allow just make sure all the water's out. Okay. Right. So before you obviously get water in the system, just make sure that obviously that's shut, you fill your tank. Obviously you've got the, the drain. That's right. get out of the yeah, way that's probably that's that's just right. watching. Obviously your drain which is in your which you can obviously uh, access by your garage, make sure that drain is closed. So the same as your boiler which you would add on your caravan. Make sure all the taps are closed in your shower as well as this one. And do exactly the same as what you would have done with the caravan. So water pump on, open it up, obviously get water running. Through the kitchen sink first or Yeah, I, I always do the kitchen sink first. So it's always best to concentrate on one area. Kitchen sink tends to be the easier one to do. Then to fill your boiler, exactly the same as what you would have done if you've drained it. Obviously it's full of air, you need to get the air out. Yeah. All you do is open it up on the hot side. After the cold side. Get, get all the air out. Because right. you'll hear the pump making a racket. If, obviously you need to make sure you get all the air out of the system. So obviously there's still air in the system, otherwise the pump will keep, continue to run. It'll be really annoying. Okay, but you can hear it much because the racket is <laughs> outside today. Really knows you kept the air today. System. Also, I've got a bit of air still in there. And just be careful when you first open it, it can come up with a quite a yeah. as well. It does, it does get a fair bit of pressure in these. Is it the pressure's already set, or is it, can you alter the pressure? I think I think you can alter the pressure. I, don't quote me on that, but no. I think you can alter the pressure on the pump. How did you find that? I did through the handbook, or yeah. Well, I can, I can ask an engineer just to confirm that. Yes. Didn't I get it on? Mm -hmm. 
Let's continue. It took a long time, that is. That's not right. I'll, I'll get the engineer to come and have a look in a minute. Right, so obviously once you've done that, you've got water in the system. Just doesn't want to switch off, does it? I would have expected that, that would have switched off by then. Yeah. I'll shut that up so I don't damage it. Right, so obviously once you've got your water system up and running, obviously you can start heating there if you wanted to. This is the control for your heating down here. Okay, so it's a combi boiler, obviously slightly different than your, your Aldi. Yeah. And if you had the control panel where you press that and it goes across the top of the screen and it goes yeah. back again, and, which was really complicated and a lot of people hated them. I couldn't get to grip with no, that at all. A lot of people don't like that. But uh, this is a lot, a lot, a lot simple or more simple. So just the under, in your, in, on your consumer unit, I do, you probably wouldn't have had this on your, um, on your uh, unicorn. Right, this one here, water heater is spare. So that is do, does nothing. Even though, press that, it lights up. Right. It will not do anything at all. The main one is that one. So what what happened was obviously when they first these first came out, you had a fire and a boiler separate. Okay, so you had the space heater, a water heater. Obviously they did, they've, they've obviously made quite a few of these that uh, they had to use these up before they uh, changed it. They've only just more or less changed it this this year. So water heater does nothing. Space heater is the one that puts the power to your boiler. Okay. Right. So if you have a look on here, see this orange light here, I've actually, I'm actually operating on electric and gas at the moment. That orange light there indicates you've got electric. If I switch that one off, you should see a red flashing light now, yeah. and that orange one's gone off. That means I'm trying to operate on electric, I haven't got electric, okay? Right. That's why you've got a red flashing light. It, red flashing light will also indicate if obviously you run out of gas or the gas is not lit. Okay, so if I switch, if, I, if you see now, I'll switch that water heater one on. You have a look down there now, red light's still flashing. Yeah. Okay, so that does nothing. So that's just a spare. The one you want on is the top one. That's what it says, space heater. You see that now? Orange lights come on there. Yeah. And obviously red lights gone out. So that's turned right round to the far end, is it? Yeah, so I'll just explain this now. Yeah. Obviously it's not easy as, uh, as everything is. Right, so I've now switched that off. So the one on the left is the one that controls the system. Okay, right. that switches it on and off, and, and it also what you're requesting of it. Okay. Right. So if you see that centers off. Yeah. If I if you see the top two. Yeah. If I turn it to say the first one, which is forty degrees, right. that's water heating on its own. Okay. Okay. So in the summer, probably summer setting, if you want just water. Okay. For the hot water. Though, isn't yeah, it? hot water. Yeah. Next one up, sixty degrees. Okay. So that's again that's just water heating. So again summer, summer setting. Okay. So it's, again, as, as I said, center off. You see that green flashing light now. Yeah. I've just set it off. Let's uh, switch it off. Sorry. What it's doing is on a cool down phase. Obviously, when you when you switch it off, when it's time to go home, just when you switch it off, allow that green light flashing to flash and then let it go off. Okay. Don't switch your 12 volts off until that's finished flashing. Right. The reason for that is it's a, the boiler's on a cool down phase. If you go and switch it off too early, it won't have cooled down enough and it may damage the boiler. Okay. Right. So if I switch it back on again. So the next one down, you should see what looks like a flame icon. Yeah. You probably won't be able to see that from that camera, but there's a flame icon, yeah? That does not mean gas, that means heating. So that's heating alone now. So when you switch that from the 40, 60, yeah. you take it off the water, don't you? Not? Yeah, on that, yeah. That, if you imagine that's a bit of summer mode. So 40, 60 is just water heating, okay? What you've got as the next one down is heating. So yeah. you can operate this boiler with no water in it and just have heating running, okay? Right. Also, if I click it to the last one, you can see that it's yeah. got water at 60. You see that, and also a flame. That flame denotes heating. That's both then. So that's both. So that's more your colder months. So you want heating and water heating. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Happy with that? Yeah. Yeah. So that is your thermostat in the centre. Okay. As I said, as we were coming along, that's a heating th thermostat. Yeah. That's your heating thermostat. Yeah. So the heater will only operate when it needs to. Okay. So yeah. you, you, the fan, as it is blown air. Will only come on when it needs to boost the temperature of the, of the room. Okay, so if you can if you can hear now, obviously there's no fan operating at the moment. I'm just trying to see the vent. Is it, have you got a vent around the around the corner there somewhere? No, down there. Yeah. yeah. So just put your hand against it, just see if you can feel it. Well, it won't do. It won't give you instant heat straight away. Yeah. It, it, the boiler needs to warm up before then it'll start throwing hot air out. Okay. You feel warm air coming back? Cold air. It's cold air. So it is just. just until, until the unit warms up, obviously it's not going to give you hot air until the unit warms up. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. I find I'm standing next to one of them and burning my leg. 
Right, so they are really good heaters, these things. They're a lot quicker to heat up than your um, Aldi system. The Aldi system is one of them that it took a long time to warm mm. up. Then you add, if you can hear that, the, the boiler's just kicked in on gas now. Okay. On gas? Yeah, that's just kicked up on gas. Why is okay. that if it's on electric as well? It's on electric and gas at the moment. Is it? Yeah. Okay, the, the setting for energy, which I'll just explain now, is on this side. Okay, so that's to set on what you want. Water heating, high water heating, or just heating, yeah. or heating and hot water. The one on the left is your energy select. Okay, you can see at the moment I'm set on the, the first one down. You can see that. Now, that flame does denote gas on this one. Okay, so it's got a gas, and you can see it's like two yeah. marks, which is electric as well. So it's, at the moment it's running on gas and electric. So the two marks means two kilowatts, or it's roughly two kilowatts, it's slightly less, but you can see there's other settings as well. So you've got gas on its own. Yeah. You've got one digit, which means one kilowatt, or roughly one kilowatt, two digits, two kilowatts. Okay, the reason why I've got it set to gas and electric, maybe that you're gonna use it in the winter time more than in the summer. In the summer, if you set it to just electric, two kilowatts, that's sufficient, I'll do if you just serving gas yeah. keep, keep off now. Um, it's sufficient enough or efficient enough to heat your water. It might give you a little bit of heating in the room, but it's not going to give you much. Okay. Right. In the winter, that's why I, I suggest that you put it to gas and electric. Okay, because that's give you more energy. If you imagine two kilowatts, at home you've probably got a kettle that's around two kilowatts. Yeah. Okay. That's not trying to heat the room and the kettle, is it? No. It's just trying to do the kettle. So, so it was like one, two, or three? Yeah. One thousand, two thousand, or three thousand. That's it, you have three kilowatts on that, yeah. But this is just two kilowatts, or it's actually 1800 watts. But it's, it's easy to explain, one, yeah. two is one, two. So the gas and electric is to give you more boost. Yeah, that's exa exactly. So if I put it to electric and gas, what it will do is use both energies from cold, Yeah. gets up to temperature, and it'll shut the gas off. It'll tick over on electric then. So once you've re achieved your temperature, it doesn't need the gas, it'll tick over on electric. Unless someone else, like myself leaves the door wide open, temperature drops, and the gas will kick back in to get it back up to temperature. So you're not using the gas all the time, it's just when you need it on that setting. Okay? Right. Happy with that? Yep. Yep. So this side is to switch it on and uh, select what you want, water heating or heating, then that side is your energy. Yep. Okay? Obviously it is in your book. But, uh, it's all, there's also, if you're quite handy on YouTube, if you look for Truma Combi Boiler, there's a few different types of control panels for that. And there's a, a video from Truma themselves, <coughs> which gives you a good a five five minute, something like that video. How did we ever cope without YouTube? I know, Google? yeah, it's so useful, or Google. <laughs> yeah. You, Google and YouTube, they're probably the one, most, probably one of the better inventions ever, ever to happen, probably. Apart from the internet. Okay. Yep. All right, so you've also got indica an indicator light on this side as well. Obviously, we've seen the red light one. Mm. Green light, that's just to say everything's okay. This side you've got is a, a warm-up phase on the uh, on this side okay so obviously the water hasn't reached temperature yet or the heating hasn't reached temperature so that will stay on until you achieve that that, okay. that light there is just to say you've got got electric okay yeah and, and it says no electric you can just use gas only so yeah you can use gas only if you wanted to just flick it around to the yeah gas. so that's that's just gas on its own now you can see I've, I've selected gas now the electric ones lights gone off because obviously I'm not I'm not out requesting the electric now so it's just going to fire up on gas itself now. So it's off itself then. So that this is this is the switch here. So they say to ring. That's now switched off. If you remember, right. flashing green light. That's on a cool down phase now. That's off then. Yeah. Yep. You remember that. Okay. Yep. Good. You'll probably have a bit of fun uh, the first couple of times you're out. Some customers ringing up. Obviously, you can ring up at any seven days a week. We're here seven days a week. Obviously, not, not after a certain time. Obviously, but no. uh, if you're on site. Obviously, give us a call. There's always someone here on the weekend as well. There's other engineers or myself. If, you, if you're if you struggling to remember how to operate it, or if there is problems, obviously, you're better off talking to an engineer, but I can explain. Are there any of those buttons for the canopy thing outside? or no, no, no. All these buttons here are for lights. So I think that light's above, the, above your lockers. That one's above your head there. And that yeah. one's just a, a floor light here, just yeah. by the fridge. It's on there as well. Yeah. Yep. That gives you floor lights. OK. Yep. Happy with that? Yep. Good. So if we go through the uh, oh, rest of the consumer unit while I've got the door open. So you've got a charger button. So as long as that switched on, you've got electric connected, it will charge the, your battery, whichever you've selected on the control panel up there. Reverse polarity, that's just an indicator light. So that one there, indicator light. If you uh, go on the continent, you wire things slightly different than what we do. You plug your electric in, come and have a look. If it's obviously glowing, then obviously it is reversed. You're gonna need an adapter to operate off their electrics. It won't damage anything, but you obviously do need to uh, change it round. 
Okay, 240, 240 trips. There's an info note at the back of the on the back wall there to say what they're connected to. Same with your 12 volt fuses. Again, that info note on the left hand side tells you what they're connected to. When you're in storage, you want to uh, protect your uh, ledger battery. You can actually switch the 12 volt systems down on the habitation side of it. And that will protect your battery, you know, especially a long time of uh, a period of storage. Because there's always something in the background ticking over that will uh, drain your battery. Well, we're just going to be parked in our driving over the winter. Yeah. You just you, turn you, it off in the winter or not? You can do it. If you, if you can plug electric in, you might as well plug electric in and then you can keep it topped up when you need to. Yeah, I wrap my Christmas presents in the caravan. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hide them in there. Hide yeah, them yeah, in yeah, and yeah. then I do all my wrapping in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good, good place, obviously. Keep hiding away from the kids. Okay, so yep. the other thing is if you do switch it off there, you need to switch it back on there because it won't switch on there if you haven't switched it back on nice. on that point. Okay. All right, next thing to come along is your fridge. It might be somewhat similar that you had in your previous van or not. Um, at the moment, it's run on gas. I'll just light that up. That's your on-off button there, this little tiny button. So you just press and hold that, switches it on or off. Blue light is to indicate everything's okay, it's working. If you want to change energy, the select button is on the left. So that's now running on electric. Auto, so with this, this fridge you've got an auto function. What that will do is pick up the best energy that's available. Okay, so if you put it to auto, if you've got electric connected, it will automatically look for electric <coughs> and put it onto electric. If electric's not available, it'll go for gas. If gas is not available, it'll go for 12 volts, which is coming from your vehicle, which only operates when your engine's running. Okay, so it's not, the, it's not gonna take 12 volts from your laser battery. It's only for when it's uh, traveling. So it's on auto and running and uh, you're driving, it'll use off the, the battery on the engine. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Okay, it won't cool the fridge down, it'll just maintain the temperature in the fridge. So obviously if you've got it on the drive, you can cool it down say 24 hours or so before or at least mm. overnight. That will cool the fridge down. Then if it's on auto, as soon as you obviously unplug the electrics from the outside and drive off, it will uh, switch to the 12 volts from your vehicle. Right. Okay. Yeah. This side is the temperature range. All five lit. That means it, that's the coldest setting. Sorry, oh, right, Trev. Any idea what's happening to that thing? Yeah, I thought um, Alex was going to take that out. Oh, you know. it was going out. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Um, so all five lit. That's the coldest setting. Obviously, it's coming out frozen butter, then obviously it's too cold. Two or three is usually about average for this country. Obviously, in a hotter climate, it obviously needs to work a bit hard, harder. Or if you have a decent summer, if yeah. you're lucky. Yeah, okay. Right, what I'll just show you is the, the warning, right, so I've just now taken it off auto, I've put it on 12 volts, which is again, it would be coming from the vehicle, it's flashing the blue light there now, and it's also got a spanner there, that, that is saying that it's obviously detected the engine's not running, and the, there's no 12 volts available, if it's doing that on the gas side of it, that means the gas hasn't lit, okay, so all you do is press and hold and switch it off, check your gas, make sure you've turned it on, make sure you've got gas, so you could just fire your cook up, make sure you've got gas running, it may be that, that you know, the crash sensor on the regulator, that might have tripped, so just right. make sure you push that in. Then all you do is switch it back on again, and uh, hopefully it'll relight. Okay, it may take two or three attempts if you haven't used it on gas for a while. Um, what you're doing then, if it's uh, having to do it about two or three times, it's trying to purge the air out of the system to get to the gas. Right. Okay, but most people tend to uh, operate electric. Okay. Yep. yep. Right, obviously that temperature range does not do anything with the freezer box. Okay, freezer is freezer. I don't know if you can see. See down, down the side here, you can see that is a little switch. You see that? Yeah. Yeah. What that's there for, obviously in the summer, obviously you get a bit of, bit of warmth, you get tend to get a bit of condensation around the door of the, uh, the freezer compartment and it can freeze shut. Okay, right, okay. that little switch there is to operate a warmer, warmer upper around the, around the door so it'll release. Okay. Otherwise it'll be frozen solid and you're not going to get anything out of there. It's got a ratchet system on the fridge so like when you're not using it. A what do you mean? What yeah. you mean the that oh, little, little yeah. tab to hold it open? Yeah. It, yeah. yeah. It okay. So I just oh, like the ratchet that thing, yeah. Yeah. So that's that's how that operates on. Okay? Yep. Yep. That works wonders that does stop it mouldy. Yeah, well that's it, yeah. <coughs> that's what you don't want. All right, the cooker. It should be pretty similar to your last one I would expect. Okay, so you just press and press another thing, ignite it using the igniter button. Okay, okay. so just be very careful. Obviously, you don't want to put, even though it's difficult to read from that angle, as uh, it says, do not, obviously do not put the glass down when it's hot, because they, they will go off with a hell, hell of a bang. It's like right. a gunshot going off if they if anything's been left on, or well, heat-wise, and they 